Good evening, everyone. How are we doing? Welcome back to another stream on the channel. Last time we are talking, uh, Leicester are doing well off the back of two wins. Now we're talking off the back of two defeats to Millwall and Plymouth, which isn't ideal. But somehow it's still in Leicester's hands to go on and win this league or at least get promoted. Of course, Ipswich and Leeds both dropping points on the weekend. Significantly Leeds losing at home to Blackburn, the Ellen Road, you know, the, the unbeaten Ellen Road. That is gone. Ipswich dropping points as well at home to Middlesbrough. So... It's all still to play for. And even Southampton are now somewhat in, in, in this mix to get promoted if they can, you know, win all their remaining games. But four games left for Leicester. We're going to try and break down what happened on Friday night at Plymouth. I don't know where to start on that one. And then I'm obviously going to have a look, a look ahead to the remaining fixtures um, this season. Obviously, change of background at uni, so it's a bit different. I try to decorate it as best as I, best as I can. Um, some people will probably fall off in a minute, but uh, hopefully uh, we'll, we will go with... Ho ho hopefully it works, and hopefully the stream is working with the internet and whatnot as well. But yeah, on uh, after Friday night, I posted quickly um, talking about... Or I, I put a question to you guys asking about what's gone wrong, what 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 kind of needs to change, etc. So we've got a few replies, 11 comments actually, which is pretty decent. So um, user... I'm not going to say the rest of that, but I genuinely think we should be playing Canada and Inacho with, 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 with this system if the teams are just going to sit back against us. Yeah. But then again, does that, is Enzo going to change the system? I don't think he is. So um, it's a tough one to really to, to suggest that, but I do get that. I don't know why the changes didn't happen quicker on Friday night. I think Daka played about 65 minutes, which is absolutely crazy. Um, everything from top, from top to bottom, from, from the board to the manager and the squad from Jack. I agree. We all said everything as well. Um, the, the manager, um, lots of people go with the Canon and Ian Acho. Um, unreal lot that Leeds um, is trying to bottle it as well, 100%. And that's the thing. Leicester is still well in this title race somehow, even after losing to Millwall and Plymouth, which is pretty pathetic, to, to be perfectly honest. But then again, everyone's losing. The teams at the bottom are fighting. The teams at the top are fighting. The teams at the top keep losing. The teams at the bottom are now winning. It's it's crazy how, how, how this season's come to an end. Um, end of strategy needs to change. I don't know why YouTube don't send the flipping notifications out. Um, LCFC Grace is absolutely shambolic at this rate. Um, we're going to go up. Um, if they had a one in seven games at home. And that Plymouth game was an absolute disgrace, to, to be honest. Um, Two up front, uh, that means no, no one out wide. That's a counter argument. Um, Daka, uh, yeah. More team passion, desire for promotion. Stay up all night, 4 a.m. Touch more on Plymouth, but we lose. Ouch. Um, the system, the style of play. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of people are, are onto Enzo, onto Daka, onto the style of play, etc. which, you know, we're not from there, which I completely agree with. Um, you know, I thought I think the team looks a bit flat at the minute. But the thing is, against Plymouth, we, we were creating chances. And as soon as they score, we just don't play again. Like, yes, we had a few chances with Daka, but before they scored, we were miles on top. Everything was in their half. We had a few chances going forward. We were, we, you know, looking good. And and the, the, then they score from a, a silly goal to give away on, on, on the break where Wheat Fast just doesn't close his man down. And, you know, it's 1 0. So are we actually live? Because no one's coming in. Um, let me have a quick look. Um, I don't know if the stream is lagging or whatnot. Obviously, we're at uni, so we'll have to see. Um, it should be all right. But, yeah, just the Plymouth game alone, just a disaster, really. Um, you know, if we won that game, we would have been far clear now in a much better position. But now, you know, we've got to try and go again. We took game against West Brom on Saturday, Southampton at home after that, Preston, then Blackburn, which are all very, very, very tough games. You know, West Brom, um, the other shock, was, uh, shock loss on Saturday to... Can't remember who it was, um, but you know it's, that's a very tough game. Uh, Jerry's in there, good to see. Um, but yeah, it's just I don't know how we can go from you know beating Norwich, beating Birmingham City late on, and then go into that to Millwall and, and Plymouth and putting in them pretty awful performances. And we played the exact same team pretty much, and we've seen no change. So come Saturday, we need some changes. Um, we'll, we'll we'll go through the team itself and, and, and what needs to change, but. Wholesale changes, in my opinion. If Daka starts on Saturday, I, I give up. Um, I think Cannon, Ian Acho, or even Vardy, um, any of them lot. My preference would, would probably be Ian Acho. I know quite a few people would, would probably go with Cannon, but I think Ian Acho does deserve a chance because if you look at it, the best football we've played this season was between August and December. And that was when Vardy and Kelechi were playing as a kind of rotation. Suddenly, Daka is now our first-choice striker, despite not playing a single minute until 
I think it was Plymouth at home actually, or or, or yeah, it was. It was Plymouth at home um, in December where Daka got his first start, completely out of the blue, and now suddenly he's our first choice striker and he's stinking the gaff up. Um, now don't get me wrong, when he first came in, he, he's, he's playing well, he's scoring, but. Since around March, February time, since since Leeds away, he's been absolutely awful. Um, West Brom uh, will, will be tough. They have the third best record for clean sheets or something. That is true. The defence is very, very good. And, you know, it was a tough game at the Hawthorns back in December, back when Leicester had, had a bit of grit about them. And obviously, we got that late winner through Harry Winks and Dewsbury on the break. Sure, surely Dakar doesn't start. Uh, even Enzo, short well... I don't know. Um, I thought Enzo would, would, would have realised after Millwall, but clearly he didn't. So, we um, we'll have to see. But on to your guys' sports once again. Um, it's very similar. A lot of people are saying two up front, uh, Kelechi, Daka, etc. Um, again, I don't, I, I don't think Enzo is going to change his style. Um, that's the way he is. You know, Pep doesn't change his style. or Ted doesn't really change his style. And, you know, they all play similar ways. I just can't see him changing it. Um he make he'll make swaps for players here and there, such, such as Dennis Pratt coming in from the likes of Wolfred and Diddy. But I can't, <clears throat> I can't see him making a wholesale change where he changes the whole formation, etc. So we'll have to see. Um, Southampton will, will will be tough too. Uh, yeah, the home advantage is, is the only positive. Leeds and Ipswich have both got two away games, and I think they've both got two away games back to back. So. It does give Leicester a real chance to, you know, get our job done and put the pressure on them, depending on when we play. And we'll have a look at that a little bit later on. But, um, yeah, going to have a quick look um, at the game on Friday because it was a disaster um, in, in, in a bit more detail. Um, then again, if, if you look at the stats and whatnot, um, it wasn't a disaster. If you look at that, I know, Jerry, I don't know what's going on. I haven't streamed in ages, so I'm, I think I think the... I think the algorithm's a bit uh, has, has fluffed me off a bit, but um, if you look at the the momentum bar, it's ridiculous. Um, so many chances, and Plymouth score a goal when they don't even have a single bar. It's crazy. Um, but then again, football, you know, it isn't determined by stats and whatnot. And we put an awful performance in, um, and we don't come away with anything. Once again, yes, we had look one point three nine expected goals, so then zero point two. Doesn't it doesn't mean anything? So. Um, it's just so frustrating. It's the same story week in, week out. And that's why, that's the thing. That's why I don't think Enzo's going to change the formation because at times we're not even playing that badly. We, we are creating chances. Millwall, I don't think we did so much, but um, it's like we're creating chances, but just not finishing them. They conceded silly goals on the break. Like the goal Plymouth score should have never have gone in. Never. With Faz, he just gives him so much. He just lets him come inside it doesn't get out to him. He's got no one to mark. There's no reason why Wout just doesn't go out there. And let's be honest, he isn't the best of players, is he? Uh, it, it, it was a good finish, but, you know, go out to him. He's not like, he's, he's not Eden Hazard. He's not going to rip you to shreds, is, is, is he? So, you know what I mean? Just get out to him and close him down. And we are conceding so many silly goals and then it just gives us a mountain to climb. We go one nil behind again and it just makes it difficult for us where before the goal went in, Leicester are playing some good stuff. Ricardo should, 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 should have scored. Been working it well out wide and so frustrating. And to make two changes as well, it's just ridiculous. And to be fair, I was pretty fuming at Enzo on Friday night because to moan about the you know the game congestion and then to name pretty much the exact same team and make two changes, and bearing in mind these changes were quite late on, especially the Vardy one. It's like, come on, like you've got all these players on the bench, and yes, some of them aren't the you know, Cal Dor, Cody, Ben Nelson, Hamza aren't, aren't going to make much change, but. You know, you've got Atgo and Cannon there who, who could do something. And even the likes of Cody and whatnot, they should be starting now because we need experience. And, you know, the team right now doesn't is clear, it's clearly lacking that. Um, stupid thing, uh, Plymouth didn't even play. Exactly, yeah. They, they weren't that good. Uh, I've seen Plymouth beating us. Yeah, it's ridiculous. How can we go from beat, from losing to... Play, we played a, what, a champion, uh, conference league quarter-final against PSV two years ago to lose it to Plymouth away. Absolutely crazy stuff. But, um, yeah, I just think on that game, it's just ridiculous from Leicester. Absolutely ridiculous. And it's another, it's such an unavoidable loss. It's ridiculous. It's crazy. And obviously, that's how, the, that's how the league table looks now. And somehow, somehow we're still second. I don't know how. Well, well Leeds lost. That's how. But we are getting incredibly lucky. 
lucky, sorry. Um, and, you know, we've got that game in hands and, you know, it's still in Leicester's hands to really go on and, and, and go and win this league. And we should really do so, you know. We've got a whole week now to rest and we should be at it on Saturday against West Brom come half 12. And if we're not, I don't know what to say. The players, you know, the players should should, should be realising now that they've had so many awful performances week after week. Now's the time to get it right. And you've got a time to make it right. Um, it's still in your hands. We're, we're not chasing games. And, you know, if we lose on Saturday, you need to nip switch, pick, pick, pick up the three points. Then we're just looking above us and hoping they, they lose when, you know, we could have had this league wrapped up by now. If we beat Bristol City away, we beat Plymouth away, we beat Millwall away them three games we should never have lost them and I know you can look back on every game we've lost this season QPR at home Borough at home unavoidable losses and even Leeds away was a completely unavoidable loss because we had absolutely dominated them and I think after that game that's where it has kind of fell apart and obviously a few weeks ago I did do a video dedicated to what's going wrong at Leicester and I thought we turned a corner after Norwich and, 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 and Brum at home but now I feel like we're straight back in the same situation I just don't get how we can have the brilliant scenes after beating Birmingham to then play like that in the last two games. I just do not get it at all. And yes, we've had to travel and whatnot, but it's you know the, fan, the fans have got to travel what, five, 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 six hours down there. The players will be getting a nice little plane, so they've got no excuses. Um, all right for me. Usually, I'd, I'd, I'd be against that, but I wouldn't even say no at the minute. I thought Fatou was really poor as well in the last two games. We we, we all love him, but let's be honest, I think he's been pretty poor. Um, just to know how we can fall off so much, we are ridiculously lucky. Yeah, 100%. We are so lucky. We are still still in a very good position to go up. And, you know, Leicester probably still are the favourites, really, considering we've got that, the, the uh, game in hand. But he keeps saying the game in hand, the game in hand, the game in hand. When that game in the hand comes next week, we've got to turn up and win it. And you know, it's not going to be easy. At, it's, it's not going to be easy at all because Southampton right now are arguably the best team in this promotion battle. And you know, I, I haven't included Southampton on the thumbnail, but by next week they 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 could be on it because Leeds, Leicester, Ipswich don't want to, don't seem to want to go up. So you know, at this rate, Southampton will, will probably somehow go up, and you know that's going to be an incredibly tough game next week. Um, but yeah, let's focus on the running then a, a bit more. We're going to go through the fixtures once again. Interestingly, the times of the other games are, are going to be played because I think I think they do have quite a big bearing at this point of the season. The managers and players will all say they'll focus on themselves, their games, but realistically, they are watching the games. Um, so, yeah, Southampton are actually playing again tomorrow. Um, but interestingly enough, Leicester play first on Saturday. We can get the three points in that one. That can put a lot of pressure on... When do they play? Um, so, Leeds play on Monday. Am I bugging or Ipswich? Don't know. Where are Ipswich at? Don't know. Um, obviously, then they Leicester play again on Tuesday. Leeds on Monday. So, they don't play for a while. Oh, Ipswich must be playing Coventry. In the, oh, yeah, there. That's why. Um, it's been, it's been uh, suspended. So, Ipswich don't have a game this, um, on Saturday. Um, so we go into the next game. Leeds play first that week, and I think we play last because we got we got Preston away. Um, so that's going to be an interesting one. When do Leeds play? Leeds play then. Sorry, Ipswich. Ipswich play out. See, Ipswich you've got a lot of time. So um, yeah, it's going to be it's interesting how the games are going. Leicester play first a few times, then 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 Leeds do as well. So I think that does have quite a big bearing on things. But then again, it's cliche. But we just got to focus on on, on ourselves. To be fair. And get the job done, and then when then when we do drop points, which will happen, we then have to look at the other games and just pray that Ipswich and Leeds somehow you know keep losing again somehow. Um, what are your thoughts on Enzo? Somebody turning on him um, on Friday night. To be fair, I was obviously very angry. I was saying I was saying a lot. You know, I was in the pub. I was saying, "Oh, Enzo, blah blah blah." blah. But realistically. Um, Enzo's done a fantastic job for us this season and I don't want to sound like I'm back in Rogers here or something, but we have to go up, obviously. And I think we I think we still do. And I think you know, Enzo deserves a lot of credit for that. But I think there's areas of his manage of of his management that he does need to improve on, particularly his game management, because I think his substitutions the last couple of weeks and the lack of substitutions really have been pretty crazy to me. Um 
the reason why Daka keeps starting, I do not know. Surely Daka even knows it himself. He's probably shocked that he's starting because he's 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 a striker. His job's to score goals. Now, yes, he may suit the link up slightly better, and his, I don't think he does. But I don't know. He must be having an absolute blinder in training because how that guy starts every single game, I don't have a clue. Because I think his build-up play is pretty poor. You usually, I'd say Daka can finish quite well because when he first joined the club, he wasn't good at his build-up play, but he used to finish quite well. You know, if you, if if you look at the Europa League, four against Sparta at Moscow, I think he scored one against Legia at home, etc. So, but now his build-up play is poor and his finishing is absolutely atrocious. That 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 body in the second half was absolutely diabolical, schoolboy stuff. And if he starts the next game, I don't know. And at this point, I wouldn't even blame Daka to be fair, because Enzo just needs to take the guy. Out. He needs to take him out of the fire because, you know, his confidence is absolutely down here. He's getting these big chances and big moments with big games. He's gonna he's gonna miss them, and it's it's not gonna help him. So just you know, take the pressure off him at least, and for the sake of the team as well, play a different striker who's probably gonna score goals. How he in actual reason play, I do not know. You know. That Bournemouth game, he came on and did fantastic. Since then, he hasn't really got a sniff, apart from coming on against Mill late on. So, I, I just don't get it. Um, really don't get it. Uh, Scott, hope you're doing all right, mate. Um, his his decisions with some making a Dak having bad, runs out might be a bit... Yeah, it's definitely too far. But um, I don't blame people on on the, on the day, on, on Friday night for saying it, because... To be fair, I was absolutely fuming, and I think I think most people it was it was quite reactionary. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, hello, Rene. Hopefully you are doing all right. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, uh, spot on. And I didn't actually realise that. So that's quite big, really. Um, I think I think that probably does help it such out because it gives them a longer time to rest. But then again, the, the games do get condensed for them a bit towards the end of the season. So but have a quick look at when Ipswich play then. So. Um, Blackburn, Sheffield Wednesday. So Ipswich, Ipswich, yeah, Ips Ipswich don't play this weekend, as Scott's just said. Uh, we play on the Tuesday, so it's, it's Ipswich are a long time away. Um, and they're playing Hull on Saturday the 27th, so that, their next game is a long way away. So, yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing or not for us, probably not. Um, how, uh, so, um, uh, my birthday, hopefully, we get the win, yeah, 100%. Happy birthday for um, to your dad. Uh, Daka just doesn't do what he should. Uh, he's, he has pace but never wins it behind. Uh, like Vardy, if he's not scoring, he brings nothing. And he's Keller Vardy. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And uh, we just need someone who can finish. Because despite his poor build-up, he's still getting chances. And any good striker can get into positions he's in. And he's just not finishing them. So, um, yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. And I think... Uh, uh, it's, Every, every, everyone's going to agree with me saying that Daku just shouldn't start but I don't know what Enzo sees I really don't get it at all and he, he, even Cannon who personally I'm not the biggest fan of Cannon I think he's a good player but I think some people think he's slight, slightly better than he is but I'd have him in a heartbeat o, over Daka right now and that's nothing on Daka I just think I just think it's a form thing really because at times of the season he has been quite good uh, but his finishing is just very poor um yeah, exactly that. And the whole thing about two, the whole thing about two top, I, I wouldn't be against it. I can't see it happening. It's just definitely not going to happen. But um, yeah, let's have a quick look at the running. Um, a few stats to, to have a quick look at based on the last few weeks for Leicester, which um, this thing doesn't make pretty reading to say the least. Uh, our form has been absolutely atrocious. Um, so yeah, forward table in the last eight games. Interestingly enough. None of the top three are in the top two. Uh, Ipswich are third. You can't see Leicester on this list. Um, so we've got to scroll all the way down to there below Hall. Ten points from the last eight games. That is it's almost relegation form at this point. You, you know, we're on par with we're on par with Millwall, below Millwall. Um, we're in the same region as Stoke and Blackburn and QPR, etc. It's like it, at this point, it's not it's not a blip. It's sustained poorness, really, because we've been shocking for week for weeks now, and I just don't I don't get how a team can fall off so drastically. Now, yes, the th I don't, the thing is though, ju ju just as I've been saying, the performances haven't been that bad. 
It's just how can we be? I wonder. I don't know if it's unluckiness now. It's just poor finishing. How can we be so bad at finishing chances? The last two months, it's as simple as that. And the games, the same constant patterns, have numerous chances, conceding unavoidable, conceding stupid goals, and then the goal goes in and we just stop playing. I, I just don't get it. Really don't get it. <coughs> Jesus, I've done this in a while. <coughs> What's the latest with McAteer, Alves, Braybrook, Nelson, etc. Teams more youngsters. Um, I don't know. I believe McAteer, I think he's back. I think he is. Anyway, that he constantly seems to be injured. Um, Will Alves, I believe he picked up another injury the other week in the under 21s. So I don't know. I don't know about him. Braybrook uh, is playing with the with the under 21s, as far as I, I know. I think Ben Nelson's just benched at the minute, but. Talking of centre backs and, uh, 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 and whatnot, does we fast start on Saturday? I don't think so. I thought it was very poor, and even Vestergaard, to be honest with you. Um, but personally, I'd I'd go Cody. Um, I don't think he's our best centre back uh, on paper, but at this point in the season, you, you need experience, and Cody's got that. He's won, he's won stuff. He's played big games. You know, he won the championship with with, with Wolves a few years ago, and he, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's a English international, and at this point in the season, you just need that a bit. Um, uh, we need to promote before Ipswich and Leeds do hundred percent. Yeah, same. Uh, it's just typical Leicester. It's like if 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 you think about it. When's the last last time Leicester have ended a season well? Honestly, don't know. Probably when when Leicester won the league. Realistically, since then 2016-17, it was a mess season to 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 be perfectly honest. In, in general, eight um, seventeen eighteen was club well disaster. Eighteen nineteen was good, but then again, it wasn't the manager bounce with Brendan coming in. Nineteen twenty, we were not up in there. Twenty twenty one. Won the FA Cup, but bottled it. Um, 21, 20, 2022, there again, got knocked out of Europe last season. Enough said about that. And now it's like, it's end season so poorly. Um, agree. Uh, need more leaders, but um, yeah, 100%. And I think it's about that balance um, of experience and freshness. And just, and you know, Enzo said it himself. You know, the games were in the last few places for Leicester. Played on Tuesday, then having to travel to Plymouth on Friday. So it's not ideal, obviously, but... To say that and to then not rotate the squad. And the thing which should not be more was to make two subs in the whole game. While well, I think Plymouth made all five. It's crazy. And yes, the subs we've got aren't on par on paper with the players we've got. Of course, Steffi's better than Akron, obviously. But to not just freshen it up. Like, it's Plymouth. No disrespect to Plymouth, but Eunice Atkins should be calling on and ripping it apart. You know what I mean? He's from Galatasaray. And we're playing Plymouth. Plymouth, like, really? come on, man. Like, yes, you know, I, 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 I don't want to sound like that, but it, it's Plymouth. Come on. It's like some, some of these players are played in the Champions League and, and, and you know, played at international level, and there's no excuses, really. Um, uh, fast, so on and off. Yeah, 100%. He's very, he's very inconsistent, but I just think in recent weeks he's been making some sloppy errors and just. Un unavoidable goals and I think both goals we have conceded um, in the last two games have both come from that left hand side I think coming inside um, if your system requires having the far and, far and away best one in the division the system sucks um, I don't know if we are I don't think we have the best squad. I don't know if we have the best squad in the whole division but then again you know it's a work in progress look how long it took Pep's you know Pep's first season at City wasn't great um, our tattoos took sort of ages to get going. Um, so it is a work in progress. Obviously, our squad is far, far, far above most teams in in this league. But I think Leicester and Leeds' squads on par on paper are both pretty equal. Even Southampton, to be fair. Uh, the Osho not running here. Um, Enzo seems to love using two to three subs. Um, yeah, to be f and it has been a pattern, to be fair, the whole season. But... I guess it, it wasn't as annoying because we used to be winning games quite comfortably back a few months ago and, you know, we had we had the job done most of the time so the subs weren't that important. But, yeah. Um, squad is, get, is getting good no matter what to get FFP. But if we don't go up and then those days, we should be... We could be in a relegation throughout next season and find ourselves in League One. Um, yeah, I think next season... I don't, I don't really want to think about that if Leicester don't go up. But... Yeah, if Leicester don't go next season, it could it could spiral down into 
into something. Um, but I don't think it, I don't think it could spiral that quickly, but it definitely could do, yeah. But you know, there's a long way to go. But just, all we have to do is get four wins. It's as simple as that, and we've beaten these four teams already. I know it's easy said than done, but if you, if you say it like that, it, you know, it's, it's pretty simple, isn't it? Um, but yeah, let me just close down these tabs quickly. Obviously, it was the uh, the EFL awards last night. Um, Dees Brule and Mads Hermanson were the only two lesser players who made the final squad. Somerville got player of the year. Surprise, surprise. Um, so that that was the team. Um, I don't think there's a whole lot wrong with it. I don't think Ruth should, should be in there, really. Um, I think Adam Armstrong, potentially. Whitaker, I don't know about that. Um, but I think apart from that, it's pretty spot on. You could argue a lesser player at centre back, but then again, in recent weeks, <laughs> should they be there? Probably not. Um, but yeah, it's good to see our two players in there. Um, start of the season, first few moments of the season. If we said, you know, we would expect this to be filled with our players, but you know, it's just not gone there. But I think it's pretty spot on. Just like I said, apart from Ruta and, and maybe one of the centre backs in there as well. Um, but yeah, you, you couldn't make a case for Steffi potentially, but I, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, good, good to see Kid and the Mads winning their awards. Um, so, yeah, but them two were pretty much as expected. Um, uh, a few months ago, Enzo would be rotating the squad. Regard, yeah, that's true. To be fair, and you know, if I just think back to the pattern we had start the first few months of the season, we played Saturday, Tuesday. Vardy started one game, Kelechi started the second. It worked absolutely fine. Atkins started the odd game here and there. Of course, we had Castell back then, who, look, look, who, looking back on it, it's probably a bit of a miss for us right now. Uh, I can't lie. Um, but I, I just, yeah, I don't get it. I really don't get it. And how Enzo suddenly changed everything just like that so quickly. And, yeah, uh, Southampton could, could go up. Yeah, definitely a chance he could do. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Uh, why Vestergaard isn't there, Ricardo? Yeah, Ricardo. Yeah, he's he is a shout, but I think he gets quite un, 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 ugh, he gets underappreciated by a lot of our fans as well, with EFL fans, because for a right back to be coming inside inverted as he does takes a lot, and to be doing it as well as he has done it in his first season, playing that role, um, I think Ricky has done a very good job this season for Leicester. So hopefully he can keep that up. Uh, it's bizarre our uh, late our uh, late season wobbles. This would be like the fourth, the fourth of the last five season of yeah, it's hundred percent. It's just I don't know what it is. It just seems to be a Leicester thing every single year. Uh, the exception was twenty twenty two, where we just poured the whole season anyway. Yeah, that's true, I guess. But then again, it, it was pretty underwhelming. Um, but yeah, if you think back to that though, twenty twenty two, we were all saying it was such a bad season. But we came like mid table in in the I think we came eighth, didn't we, that season? If you if you're talking twenty if you're talking twenty one, twenty, twenty two, yeah, we came we came eighth and we were all our oh, ru ru rubbish season. Little did we know what was gonna come the season after that one, but bloody hell. But um, yeah, anyway boys, we are at the half an hour mark. I'm getting very hot in the room. Um so, yeah, I'm probably going to wrap this up in a couple of minutes' time. Uh, make sure to go and drop a like, though. It does massively help the channel out. Obviously, four games left now for Leicester City. West Brom Saturday, Southampton Tuesday, Preston Monday, and then Blackburn on Saturday to wrap it all up. So, uh, I will be at all them games. So, lots of content on the way. I'm trying to do as much as I can um, over the next couple of weeks or so. And hopefully, um, hopefully see Leicester get promoted. But at this point, I... Then have a clue. Uh, have you seen the Brazil scout own? Yes, yeah, Sean St. Ledger. Um, I think that's definitely do need to go into that South American market a bit more because, you know, if if, if you look at teams like Brighton, they've done it fantastically well, picked out some gems, and especially with Leicester's, you know, financial situation, we do need to be scouting it a bit more and trying to pick out some gems just, just like they did with the likes of Morris and, and whatnot. So, um, yeah, it's definitely a, a smart idea. Uh, but then again, it depends if Leicester can buy players or not. Um, yeah, I think that's true, Jerry, to be fair. But then again, the interesting thing is, um, obviously, Leicester can't get a points um, deduction this season. So, you know, that is positive, but it is, it is a, as expected. But uh, yeah, I think if Leicester do go up, we will be able to sign players absolutely fine. I think we will be limited still with money and whatnot on how much we can spend. 
I think a, a lot of people get mixed up with the fact that Leicester do have money, but just can't spend it right now. Um, but yeah, um, if we don't go up, who knows what's going to happen? Because you know, I, I think I think it'd be a case of we can sell players, but we can't buy any, so it may turn into a slight disaster. But um, yeah. Anyway, boys, that is where I'm going to wrap it up tonight. Thank you very much for watching. It's much appreciated. If you're watching this back on playback, let, 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 <coughs> Jesus. Let, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I can uh, drop a like. And uh, I'll see you on Saturday for West Brom at home, which is going to be an absolutely massive one. So, um, yeah, I'll see you boys then. Stay safe. Up the Leicester.